much. Um, so, my presentation is um, about um, spatial autocorrelation. Um, it's a thing that I've explored, explored last year at the CIA um, during the session about um, new methods for uh, the use of R in archaeology. I provided a review of the different uh, uh, statistical methods used in archaeology to explore spatial autocorrelation. We've got some here. If you're interested in uh, my presentation and uh, the data and the analysis and the implementations that I that I reviewed, you can find it on my GitHub. Um, I'm not going to spend so much time talking about this uh, because, of course, it's, uh, it's already there and it's a well-established um, um, technique or a series of techniques. Basically, is the property of spatial data uh, to vary their value or certain parameters according according to the to the distance or the uh, geographical space. Um, however, in archaeology, these the spatial autocorrelation is largely or exclusively investigated for um, numerical continuous. Uh, variables, not for categorical variables. There is a well-established statistics called uh, joint count statistics, which explores spatial autocorrelation, global spatial autocorrelation for uh, categorical variables. Namely, how if, uh, in this case, it's called BB or WW because uh, uh, the um, the idea is that you have black cells and white cells, and if black cells are closer to each other than expected, you have autocorrelation. If, if, if white cells are closer to each other than expected, you've got autocorrelation of white cells. If black and white cells, as you can see in the third statistic, the third uh, equation, are closer to each other than expected, you have um, negative autocorrelation or no autocorrelation in this case. Um, there are some assumptions. The first assumption is that, um, of course, the independence of uh, black and white, but of course, this is what we're, we're exploring. And uh, X uh, is a realization of, um, of a random variable of a Bernoulli distribution. So again, as we said, black or white. And the other assumption is that they are B, um, uh, X with I and X with J are equiprobable. Uh, which is not always the case. Since uh, um, both the statistics B, 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 w, w, and B, uh, w demonstrate asymptotic normal distribution, their significance can be explored using uh, the Z-test. Pretty simple. Um, the, uh, the reason, as we will see later on, the reason implementation of this test uh, in SPDEP, a package, uh, an R package for uh, the analysis uh, of spatial dependencies, um, so, um, it's not particularly innovative. As far as I know, it's never been applied in archaeology. And the reason is, um, as far as I'm concerned, that um, uh, there's no solid method to assess the local autocorrelation, which is, okay, we have, this is a summatory, so we have the um, overall global autocorrelation of black and white cells, or whatever you want to call them but you don't have a local indicator of spatial autocorrelation, which they exist for numerical variable, they're called um, LISA, a local uh, indicators of spatial association, but they didn't exist for, uh, um, for um, uh, categorical data until quite recently. In 2003, uh, Barry Boots explored the possibility of um, developing local indicator for categorical data, and, it, and he called them LICD. The problem with categorical data is that local autocorrelation, um, because we are talking about uh, uh, bino um, um, binomial uh, values, um, requires two uh, measurements, not only one. One is at least two. 
One is a measurement of composition, and the second is a measurement of um, um, uh, configuration. We will see it later. As far as composition is concerned, so boots, I'm going to go through the method really rapidly, uh, so in order to explain how I implemented it for archaeological data and, and how it can be used in archaeological data. I'll try to be as quick as I can on this. Um, so Boots implements uh, a moving window. As you can see, is uh, each cell, uh, each window uh, is at least 30 regions. This is based on tests in the um, And in these moving windows, of course, the realization um, of, um, um, of the autocorrelation, so the contiguity between, or the proximity between um, um, or the occurrence of black cells within this moving window uh, follows the uh, uh, binomial probability mass uh, distribution. So it's pretty um, standard as a method to assess the probability of having black cells or white cells within this moving window. These moving windows is centered um, on each cell, and so you have the, co the autocorrelation of the individual cell compared to the other cells within the window. This is only the um, this is only related to the composition, so the probability of having a certain number of cells within a given moving window centered on each cell. Um, the the probability the null hypothesis here is first of all there is an assumption on no uh, global autocorrelation. So uh, in the whole study area in the whole region of investigation, the data are not. Uh, autocorrelated. This is the assumption, and the other assumption is like the um, the other uh, important thing to remember is that the null hypothesis is conditional in this case. That's why we need an additional parameter, which is the configuration. So the null hypothesis. I need to read it because um, I need to read it because um, uh, of course it's uh, it's quite complicated. So given the number of black cells composition in the local space, so the window. The value of configuration, configuration of LICD is not significantly, significantly different from what would be expected if the black cells were located by chance in the local space. So it's not only a matter of the number of cells you've got, um, or black cells you've got within the window, but also how they cluster. Therefore, the analysis of um, local configuration is required. So how close these uh, black cells or white cells are within the window. And this is investigating using the same uh, binomial um, uh, mass uh, um, uh, equation, uh, mass probability equation, uh, for joints and not for uh, uh, values. And then we use uh, like this summatory that uh, analyzes the, first analyzes the probability of having clumps, so clusters, and their size, and, and then sums them all up for, for the eye of the window. As you can see, this method is really sophisticated, fairly sophisticated, uh, but really complicated, especially yeah. if we're not dealing with um, regular lattice. And this is a thing that we need to consider later on. So another aspect, and I'll go very fast because uh, I've already been given a warning, Another thing is that in a later paper, um, uh, Boots uh, uh, acknowledges that uh, um, one measurement of configura local configuration um, is not enough. And based on uh, existing studies, um, especially in um, image processing, he defines five <laughs> different alternative ways of analyzing spatial configurations. Most of which, so some are based on the analysis of joint counts, some are based on the analysis of patches, their size, their distribution in the space within the moving window, and so on. In our case, we're gonna focus later on, so in one minute probably, um, on this, the number of black and white joints, which is nothing more than a local version of the joint count statistics we've seen at the beginning. So, as I said, this method was developed for, um, 
for a, a regular lattice. But Boots says that there's no theoretical limitation in applying it to irregular lattice, like for instance the one you can see that is more common in archaeological uh, research, for instance landscape archaeology, the one you can see here at the bottom. Um, Roger Bivand and some collaborators have um, adapted the methodology uh, that um, Boots has um, developed for irregular lattices and instead of using a moving window which was uh, not very appropriate apparently for a um, uh, non-regular lattice then if you want we can discuss later on why and um, he used sets of neighbors calculated uh, as we would see in different ways um, now I'm going to present really briefly my application to archaeological archaeological data set and uh, and explain why it can be useful these uh, Vivan's uh, adaptation of Boots methods of Boots, Boots LICD for archaeological purposes and what the limitations are. Um, joint count statistics, as I said before, is implemented in this uh, SPDEP package. LICD is not implemented yet, but it's still working progress. We're still working on it. So, as an um, archaeological um, example of the implication of um, um, LICD, I used the historic landscape characterization. This is a qualitative but formalized method to um, characterize the landscape, so discriminate the landscape into um, chronologically and spatially homogene homogeneous units, so create um, categories or landscape types that um, that uh, we can use to analyze spatial and temporal relationship between these uh, categories or landscape types. The case study specific that I use is the historic landscape characterization that we've prepared uh, in Newcastle for uh, an area in southern Turkey. And in particular, I analyze, as you can see, there are a lot of different categories, and these are, these are only the broad types, not the individual um, character types. So I've used as an example the suitability to change, which is uh, I um, queried those polygons that change between the 1970s and the 2010s characterization and which are the black um, areas against the uh, those polygons those uh, uh, areas that didn't change between the 1970s and 2010s and i've analyzed whether whether there is a spatial autocorrelation between uh, these uh, character types that uh, changed over time and whether this uh, autocorrelation is clustered in specific uh, area of the um, of our case study. One problem that I want to uh, describe in depth here is the problem of neighbours. Um, Bivand uses contiguity neighbours, these ones, because it's more um, is closer to the con concept of joint counts uh, provided by uh, the um, configuration analysis suggested by Boots. In, my, in, in our case, I don't think it's, um, it's suitable because uh, contiguity neighbors uh, um, assumes uh, that uh, um, contiguity neighbors assume that uh, um, there is uh, each area is uh, distinctive, whereas in archaeological data set like this, the boundaries might be conventional, it might not be real. So we, it might be that we are analyzing the autocorrelation between two areas that in fact are the same area. So I decided to use um, key nearest neighbors, and in this case I set key to eight, because uh, the average number of neighbors for continuity neighbors was nearly six, so I wanted to go over the average number of neighbors. This is the joint count statistics. As you can see, with continuity neighbors, the WW are significantly autocorrelated 
and B, um, black black BB are not, BB are the black areas. Whereas for uh, the um, key nearest neighbor, it's the opposite. So first um, interesting um, problematic results. And this is the LICD, the application. I plot as black, the areas that are significant, significantly autoverlated, so there are significant clusters, significant composition, and there are, um, there are significant uh, black, and black, uh, black and black and white and white uh, uh, joints. Whereas the red um, areas are um, outliers, so significant outliers, non-clusters, and um, significant black and white joints. As you can see for key nearest neighbor, as we expected, uh, the, the number of um, autocorrelated uh, polygons is much higher because the number of neighbors is much higher and is uh, consistent across the, the study area. And the number of outliers is pretty much the same and is very low as we expected. Whereas for contiguity neighbors, uh, the number of autocorrelated data is, uh, is fairly low. So, um, let me see if I can have to say something about that, otherwise we go to a conclusion. Um, yeah, the, the main problem here, the main problem here, like the problems are four, and the, these are problems that we are trying to address, like two or three problems, and one is the implementation. Number one is that we need to provide an agile method to estimate uh, significant um, um, Statistical significance. At the minute, we can easily um, analyze statistically statistical significance for um, composition, but not from configuration. For different statistical issues related to the fact that we're using a set of neighbors rather than a window, and we're using um, an irregular lattice. The second problem is the problem of neighbors, as I pointed out before. Logically, theoretically, the use of key nearest neighbor for archaeological purposes is more appropriate, but we need to make, and I haven't had the time to do that yet, some tests to see the, to assess the mathematical implications of using key nearest neighbors over contiguous neighbors. Um, the, th the third aspect is that the next step for me is to apply it to uh, archaeological regular grids, which is much more straightforward. That's why I didn't um, explore it here. Um, but archaeological grids are very common in excavation uh, for excavation intrasite and for um, uh, landscape service. So it might be really useful there as well. And then, as I said before, we are developing um, a tool that will be integrated into SPDEC package for um, uh, LICD. That won't be very soon, but we're still exploring some of the issues that are presented here. And uh, I wish, uh, uh, and I'd be happy if you had some feedbacks or uh, some questions or some doubts so they can help us exploring these uh, possibilities. Thank you very much.